I now welcome Mr. Ashok Tanga from Third BSc Biochemistry to present the prayer song. Satya Vratam, Satya Param, Satyam, Satya Syayonim, Nihitancha Satya, Satya Satya Satyam, Satya Satya Netram, Satya Atmakam, Swam Sharanam Prapannaha, Vani Gunana Kathane, Pravana Ukathayam, Astaucha Karmasu, Manastava Pada Yornaha, Lutyam Shirastava Nivasa, Jagat Praname, Rishtestatam, Garishanes to Bhavatanam, Namo Bhagavate Krishnaya Adbuta Karmane, Rupanama Vidhetena, Jagat Prida Tioyataha. Times it's the journey that teaches you a lot about your destination. I now take this opportunity to invite Dr. P. T. Srinivasan, sir, head of Department of Biochemistry, to address the gathering. Please, sir. A very, very good morning to all of you present here. I welcome all the participants of the uh, webinar today. The topic of the webinar is really interesting uh, for most of us because it talks about the drug discovery. Now, the whole world is reeling under the COVID pandemic. Everybody is trying to develop a different type of models of vaccines. Some are related to development of the drugs. Various drugs have come into the market, but now vaccine has taken the top priority. So in this, especially in this COVID pandemic situation, this drug discovery is an important area where the students have to have some knowledge all the both the undergraduates and the postgraduates of biochemistry should have some basic knowledge about the drug discovery how a drug is getting discovered and how a particular drug comes into the market and uh, uh, in the, used in the treatment of the diseases so in this situation this particular topic that is the thiosemicarbazones so the speaker of the day dr mahendran dharmasivam uh, scientist from the Griffith Institute for Drug Discovery in Australia, an institute, the university which is totally specialized in clinical drug discovery for various diseases, including cancer, etc. So he has been working there for the past three years on this uh, drug discovery, and he has got a lot of interesting findings about how this uh, class of thiosemicarbazones. I hope. Many of the first year students who remember their chemistry in from the 12th standard on the aldehyde ketones chapter, where you have some of the uh, condensation reactions with the various compounds with aldehydes, especially the carbonyl compounds, condensation products with the 2,4-dinitrophenyl, hydrazine, hydrazine, hydrazone, hydroxylamine. So the condensation products, if you remember from that chapter, you will be able to uh, catch up on the topic of today's uh, webinar. So, with this small introduction, I once again welcome the speaker, Dr. Mahendra Dharmasivam, for his uh, wonderful talk on to be on the thiosemic zones, the new wave in the cancer treatment. So, how he discovered that particular compound and how it is effective in the treatment of the cancer. So, I want all the students to pay attention and learn the basics of the drug discovery and what is the research in drug discovery how a drug is getting discovered how a particular compound is being narrowed down in the treatment of uh, any disease from a list of from a big database of various ligands that are available in the internet and so on and so forth so i advise all the students to take notes on all the uh, content that the speaker is going to deliver today so with this small introduction, I just now uh, leave it to the uh, Uber crew to carry over the program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. I would like to invite Dr. D. Venkatesh, Assistant Professor in Chemistry, to introduce the speaker. Please, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, Good morning, everyone. I would like to feel proud to say that the talent they have displayed today is proof that they have the ability to become both the citizens of our society and to help themselves and others in various ways. 
I'm privileged and humbled to take this opportunity to introduce the chief guest of the day, Dr. Mahindran Dharmasivam, GU Postdoc Fellow, Griffith Institute for Drug Research, Griffith University. The strength of Dr. Mahindran Dharmasivam is his educational qualification. He did his master's in chemistry from the new college, Chennai. And he was awarded PhD in chemistry in the year 2018 from the University of Madras. Postdoctoral research associate in the, in the University of Sydney in the year 2019 to 20. And postdoctoral research fellow, Griffith Institute for Drug Discovery, Griffith University in the year 2020-20. Dr. Mahindran Dharmasivam was honored by Griffith University for the development of innovative chemotherapeutics for cancer treatment that overcomes drug resistance and polyamine metabolism and also as Sapphire Biomolecular Imager for Western Analysis. He has also received PhD fellowship from Tamil Nadu government and also won uh, first prize for best paper presentation, UGC sponsored national level seminar on modern trends in chemical sciences organized by Government's Arts College, Chennai. He is also co-supervising on honor student and a postdoctoral fellow at Griffith University. He has also monitored, so he, ha he has also mentored both MPhil researchers under MSc students in their research projects in New College. So far, he has published more than 40 research articles in international journals with a total impact factor around uh, 116, and his total citation is around 8,293. And the H index and I10 indexes are 16 and 20. He is expertise in synthesizing new organic compounds, organometallic compounds, and nanoparticles for cancer treatment. Now, I invite our distinguished guest to give us valuable inputs to us. Thank you, sir. My name is Mahendran Dharmasimh. Thank you so much for the nice introduction, uh, Professor Vengadesan. I'm going, I'm going, I would like to express the important role of thiosemigabazone in cancer treatment. Before going to talk about this, first I would like to explain the very important background about the cancer because cancer is the second leading cause of death globally. And the World Health Organization estimated 9.6 million death in the year of 2018. And also it estimated in 2021, 1.89 million new cancer cases diagnosed and 6 lakhs cancer death in one, in only in USS. And World Health Organization also estimated 1.2 million new female cancers all over the world and 1.4 million new men cancers. Globally, the breast cancer is the leading cancer, not only uh, around the world. In India, uh, Indian Council of Medical Research estimates in 2020, 1.39 million cancer cases in 2020. Also, it will rise to 1.5 million in 2025. Also, the ICMR report estimates 27.1% of uh, all the cancer cases in India is tobacco related. Here you can see the Bhopal uh, in India, Bhopal, Pune and Tamil Nadu. So these three states it's leading uh, breast cancer, struggling to the breast cancer um, every year. In 2013, I went to Adair Cancer Institute. Therein I was seen many cancer affected uh, patients, especially children. That incident stimulated me to fighting against two cancers. Cancer is a disease caused by an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in part of the body. Uh, you can see here, this is the normal cells. Here, the cancer cells keep growing and making new cells. Here, the abnormal cells into multiply and crowd out the normal cells. The malignant growth or a tumor resulting from such a division of cells causes problem in where the in part of the body where the cancer is started. So here you can see this is the first mutation once the cancer initiate in first. This is the normal cells is the clear morphology, but it's initiated into single mutation and into multiple second mutation, third, fourth, and uncontrolled growth. Once the, it reaches to metastasis, the cancer breaks through the membrane and uh, break the cells easily spread into the other part of the body. So this is the normal cells and this is the cancer cells. You can see here the clear morphology of normal cells, uh, large cytoplasm and the cancer cells, the cytoplasm is reduced. 
and the, the nucleus is a single nucleus but in cancer cells it's a multiple nucleus also the chromatin it's a chromatin is the fine chromatin but here coarse chromatin so the the important is causes of cancers the not only india all over the world 33% uh, of cancer diagnoses are caused by tobacco so the tobacco uh, induce uh, many cancers uh, especially lungs mouth and nausea and etc and the 20% of cancer diagnoses are related to individual being obesity or overweight even the obesity and uh, tall also induce some uh, cancers for uh, bowel breast kidney and etc 16 percentage of uh, ca uh, cancer diagnoses are related to infection with the cancer causing pathogenesis uh, and the five uh, each five percent like uh, insufficient physical activity and poor dietary hab habits also induce the cancers and two percent for exposure to ultraviolet also some of the pack uh, fact foods like uh, salted preserved foods and arsenic in drinking water also induce some type of cancers so the ca next cancer symptoms um, so the cancer symptom is depends upon the cancer types uh, the general uh, symptoms are fatigue or weight loss pain uh, skin changes unusual bleeding persist persistent cough fever here you can see here so some examples of uh, some type of cancer symptoms like breast cancer, lungs cancer, and brain cancer, and blood cancers. So next, how to diagnose the cancers? Uh, you all know about these uh, techniques. The lot of techniques widely used for uh, diagnose the cancers: so radi radiological di diagnosis, cytological diagnosis, histological diagnosis, person section, hematological diagnosis, immuno hysterochemistry, molecular diagnosis, and tumor markers. In this technique, um, radiological diagnosis is widely used to technique. Uh, in this technique, uh, four different methods are currently used to, to uh, find the ca cancers, X-ray, ultrasound, CT scan, and MRI scan. So the MRI scan is the efficient one to exactly show the a variety of cancers of body soft tissue large blood vessels and major organs so next the important thing how to cure the cancer in the beginning the first surgery was used to, to treat the cancer uh, the affected uh, part was removed by sur using a surgery but this uh, method is uh, drawback uh, due to the when during the surgery time so the cancer cells also spread into the normal other places so again it formed the cancer so the surgery is not effective and then uh, research is more on to radiation therapy so the Mary Curie was introduced uh, some uh, radioactive elements to cure the cancers and this method also limited due to the high energy uh, particles like gamma rays uh, x-rays uh, when we pass on to the cancer cells also it damage the normal cells so this method also drawback and next moment the immunotherapy are targeted therapy so the immunotherapy is good it's not the any side effects but the problem is if uh, everyone don't have the high immunity power so it's very hard to activate the immune system to everyone so the next research is more on to chemotherapy so chemotherapy is the uh, widely and largely used uh, treatment for cancer so the chemicals kill the tumor cells or prevent them from the developing of the cancers so hdf chemotherapy so the chemotherapy main goal is cure prolonged survival, palliation, radio sensitivity. So in 1940, the first uh, chemotherapy was introduced by Goodman. So he has discovered nitrogen mustard, but this compound is not discovered for the cancer purpose. It was discovered for the nitrogen gas war. And uh, luckily it showed the more toxicity. That's why the, it entered into the clinical trial and it showed the good activity and it's completely cured the lipoma for the uh, lipoma patients and then continuously uh, many chemotherapic uh, drugs were uh, discovered uh, especially the cisplatin carboplatin oxaliplatin lobaplatin niraliplatin and taxorubicin 5-fluorouracil and gemcitabine so these are all the other uh, discoveries um, 
most of the drugs effectively cure the cancers at the same time these uh, drugs induce some side effects so so the classification of chemotherapy is uh, it's classified into seven category so alkylating agents anti metabolites anti tumor antibiotics biologics hormones plant alkylates are uh, targeted therapy so in this classi classification so the these are all the highlighted uh, drugs are widely used in the for the cancer treatment so especially for the platinum uh, drugs like cisplatin carboplatin oxaliplatin and uh, toxorubicin bleomycin so again the these compound these drugs are effectively cure the cancer at the same time it induce severe side effects especially for the platinum complexes cisplatin carboplatin oxaliplatin it induce uh, many side effects ototoxicity neurotoxicity nausea vomiting uh, low water solubility so these are all the drawbacks of these uh, platinum drugs but uh, and taxorubicin is good but it's not uh, good in the organic form of drugs once it enter into the body it penetrate into the cell wall and then enter into the lysosome it bind with copper and then act showing more activity when compared to the normal taxorubicin so similar the bleomycin also so it's bind with ion in the body and then it uh, gives more activity so next uh, why thiosemic arbutin uh, play important role in cancers so that during the last decade thiosemic arbutin have been clinically developed for variety of disease including tuberculosis viral infections malaria and cancers because of the thiosemic arbutin structure multi it contain lot of uh, functional groups uh, say for example electron the electron donating withdrawing substituent and uh, it contain it, present methyl group is it easily interact with the proteins and the sulfur group chelating the copper and iron uh, from the cells so overall these uh, uh, properties uh, properties uh, increasing the activity and uh, reduce the side effects so the nowadays that's why many research group focused thiosemic arbutin for variety of uh, disease not only cancers so the first uh, thiosemic arbutin based drug was discovered in 1940 uh, so the drug name is uh, thioacetazone so it was mainly used for multi drug resistant tuberculosis so this compound is the orally active antibiotic and this compound also strongly inhibit the mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, at uh, 0.1 microgram per mole so this is the structure of the thioacetazone also this uh, synthesis of this compound is very easy so fesetamidine fesetamidine benzaldehyde and condensed with the thiosemic arbutin and form this uh, thioacetazone thioacetazone is also acting as a pro drug and it activated uh, many other uh, tuberculosis uh, drugs uh, so say for example ethanomide and isoxyl still this drug uh many african countries used for this drugs this drug also show some side effects um, but still uh, many countries african countries used to these drugs because of the cost so this is very very cheap so that's why the many undeveloped countries still using for this drug for the tuberculosis next the second uh, clinically investigation drug uh, name uh, methazosone so this is also uh, synthesis of this uh, drug is very easy so n methyl isetin ketone treated with thiosemic arbutin and it and form the methazosone so this is the antiviral drug uh, it's mainly inhibiting mrna and protein synthesis uh, this drug uh, widely used for uh, smallpox the interesting thing is uh, so this drug firstly uh, tested in south india in in the year of 1965 so this uh, compound completely cure uh, 75 to 90 by the smallpox disease similarly the uh, similar structure of the other thiosemic arbutin also uh, strongly inhibit the malonyl leukemia virus and uh, still it's uh, undergoing the clinical trial for the other virus diseases so another drug name called 5-hydroxy uh, 2 formylpyridine thiosemic arbutin 5hp so this is the first drug uh, tested for anti cancer and the, and it shows in the 
uh, in vitro anti cancer activity also the animal studies shows efficient so that's why this compound entered into the phase 1 clinical trial because of this compound active anti neoplastic agent against rodent transplanted tumors and also therapeutic index uh, so this compound shows a potent activity in cancer cells also it uh, so less activity in normal cells which means it's good therapeutic index compared to normal and cancer cells also the solubilized in waters so based on this uh, success story of these compounds entered into the clinical trial unfortunately during the human trials in this compound induce severe side effects and then this compound withdrawn from the clinical trials again uh, based on the success of the compound so because this compound enter into the clinical trial and then the many research group uh, interested to again continuously synthesizing and changing the substituent and functional group and uh, continuously studying the anti cancer property of many variety of thiosemic carbosomes so the next compound is the uh, is the first uh, thiosemic carbosome based compound uh, tested for variety of um, clinical trials also this compound uh, shows good activity against variety of cancers uh, it belongs to the family of drug called uh, ribonucleotide reductase inhibitors so you can see here this is the uh, ribonucleotide reductase inhibitors the tripen uh, it enter into the active side of the binding packet so this compound uh, it has undergone 30 30 phase 1 and phase 2 clinical trials and also it's currently undergoing fourth active clinical studies including phase 3 clinical trial so this uh, tripen compound combining with the cisplatin uh, for the radiation therapy for advanced age of cervical and vaginal cancers so this interesting compound it's a, it's a cell uh, it damaged the uh, so this is the cell action cell cycle so cell cycle generally contain uh, three phases like g0 g1 uh, apoptosis phase and s is the dna synthesis and g2m is the metastasis so this compound uh, completely reduce the metastasis and uh, and uh, increase the synth dna synthesis so it's uh, once the cells uh, move from move from uh, metastasis to dna synthesis which is good in the name of our drug development so also it's uh, kill a uh, lot of ca cancer cells uh, it's good uh, activity but at the same time this tripen compound uh, during the phase 1 and phase 2 clinical trials also it induced some side effects during the uh, taking the patients uh, like uh, uh, nausea vomiting some other uh, gastrointestinal issues so that's why the many research group again uh, changing the substituent and but they are keeping the metal donating uh, from groups like n n s because this is a yeah i will explain later for this uh, important role of this uh, donating groups so the next compound name is copper atsm so this is also thiosemic carbosome based copper complex so this is com uh, this complex uh, uh, currently undergoing stage 2 clinical trials for uh, pet imaging and ct scan uh, for head and neck and cervical cancers so this copper atsm complex is a uh, low toxicity and easily penetrate into the blood barrier blood bra blood brain barriers into the als patients also the the structural features of this complex is a small hydrophobic ligand with a high affinity for copper to com copper copper in the plus 2 oxygen state because this copper 2 complex enter into the cell wall as in the lysosome it under it absorb the positive charge and move uh, undergone the redox cycling and uh, redox cycling and produce the ROAs uh, followed by uh, release of cath cathepsin and followed by cell death mechanism the important so this compound usually low reduction potential of this compound prevents copper release in most tissues but allows selective release of copper in cells without a damaging mitochondria you can see this this image so actually now we are if you are taking mri so the gadolinium complexes are widely used for the mri but this complex now uh, so that's why these compounds enter into the clinical trial for pet 
So using this copper complex, you can see here the so day first you can clearly identify the affected uh, cancer affected part of the head. So this compo uh, compound is uh, very cheap. So compared to gadolinium complex, uh, hopefully this will uh, approve the uh, uh, positron emitter agents. So the side effect of this complex is less, uh, but still uh, to checking a lot of property of these complexes, uh, still it's in the clinical trial. So the another compound, uh, interesting compound, name is CODI2. So this is also, uh, you can see here the nitrogen, nitrogen sulfur. So ma many uh, research group keep this donating group because this group uh, easily binds uh, the excess ions uh, copper inside the body uh, from the cells. So this compound also shows uh, highest anti-cancer activity when compared to the tripin standard drug. So you can see here the uh, tripin is 0 0.8 micromolar, but this one is 0 0.5. Not much more difference, but it's more active. So that's why it's entered into the phase two clinical trial for the variety of cancer treatments. So these compounds also um, kill the high resistant cancer cells like PGP cells. So you can see here the Western blot uh, clearly shows. So the uh, cells plus the compound com becoming uh, upregulation compared to the controls, which is good. So again, uh, so the this is the interesting result cell cycle arrest. Um, so this compound also similar to the tripin. So completely reduce the G2M phase and the cells move to uh, G2M phase to DNA phase. Also, the this compound is good in uh, early and late apoptosis. Also, some morphological changes and compared to control, uh, most of the cells become shrinking and promoting condensation. So based on these success stories of these compounds uh, going for a phase two, phase one and phase two clinical trial for variety of cancers. So next, the next and important. So this is an ongoing project I'm working in this lab. So in my group, my host lab over a period of more than 25 years uh, has pioneered a new class of agents known as diprotyl ketone thiosemicarbosone, DPT analogs, BPT analogs, and APT analogs. So you can see here, so we are also keeping the same mite is like nitrogen, nitrogen, sulfur. So this is metal donating functional groups. So we are only changing the methyl substitution and penyl, changing the period into penyl and uh, only methyl. So because when we increase the uh, lipophilicity or hydrophobicity, what will happen into the cells. So not only our group, so many other research groups also used this compound and tested many cancer studies, both in vitro and in vivo. They are proved the activity of these compounds. You can see here, this is the first generation uh, analogs, like D uh, DFO is the standard called uh, ion chelator. And you can see here DP4 format. So this, uh, one, two, three. These six agents are the first uh, generation analogs. So the lead compound, DP44MT, you can see here the IC50 value 0 0.004 micromolar, which means it's very, very less concentration. It killed the cancers. Similar to the second generation analogs, the DP44MT, similar activity, and DPC 0 0.013. It's not close, but also still showing uh, good activity and selectivity. So, so these uh, values uh, obtained from SKNMC neuroblastoma cells. So, the, so these compounds like the first generation, uh, second generation and BAP, B, uh, APT, BPT and DPT series follow the double punch mechanism. So the compounds are first uh, enter into the cell and uh, ion depletion from tumor cells. This is the first bench. What is the advantage of this means? The cancer cells needs to grow more ions. So these agents uh, remove the ions from the cells. So this is the first punch. 
And the second punch is the ions again bind with excess ion or copper inside the cells and undergoing the redox, uh, redox cycling and form the ion 3 plus 2, ion 2 plus or copper 2 plus to copper 1 and uh, going back to a pentone chemistry and produce the ROIs and followed by cell death mechanisms. So this is the double, second punch. So these all the chelators uh, follow this mechanism. So that's why this uh, chelator shows a pronounced anti-cancer activity. So for the less concentration. So the first uh, generation uh, lead compound uh, name called uh, DP44 Meti. So variety of studies uh, showed a DP44 Meti. It's a good anti-cancer activity, uh, not only in the in vitro, also in in vivo. You can see here. So this is the normal uh, control uh, tumor volume. And this is the TP4 format treated uh, tumor volume. You can see here after the after five days, it reduced to 0 0.5 mil. It's reduced completely reduced the tumor volume. So this compound, in terms of cost, it's very cheap because just 44 uh, dimethyl 3-thiosine carboxide condensed with uh, diprotyl ketone and form this compound. It's a single step, so it's not uh, complicated to synthesize. It's easy to synthesize. Also, it's uh, cheap. Uh, again, so this compound uh, also tested in uh, another cancer cell named uh, PGP expressed cells. It's the high resistant cells. You can see here. So the compared to vehicle control. The compound very less concentration 0 0.1 milligram and 0 0.2 milligram is completely reduced the uh, tumor uh, size after the after five days so this is for uh, kb31 non-pgp so this is uh, control uh, reference and this is the pgp expressed cells so this uh, dp44 mt is uh, cost wise is cheap also it so the you can see here again the icpp value 0 0.004 which means it's good anti-cancer activity. Also, it's in the tumor, uh, completely reduce the tumor volume in in vivo animal model, but, uh, two different cells. Not only, I, I'm showing two different, but we done a lot of uh, cancer cells in, in mice model. So based on this uh, success story, we are planning to, we are to actually my group plan to move clinical trial. And after many uh, animal studies expressed this uh, DP4 for MT complexes induce some cardio toxicity during the animal studies. So which is not good uh, to moving to the clinical trials. So this compound is uh, failure to move to the clinical trials because of the cardio toxicity. So the mechanism of this compound, so once, in, once it ent, uh, enter into the lysosome, uh, it uh, gained um, protonation, positively charged in uh, acetic medium, pH is around 5. So it bind with copper from uh, autophagy, uh, copper recycling, and then form copper 2 complex, and then undergoing a redox cycling, copper 2 plus become copper 1 plus, and then it release... Uh, ROS followed by cathepsin and followed by cell death mechanism. So again, so these type of compounds are similar, uh, all the complexes similarly following these mechanistic pathways. So based on the drawback of this compound like uh, cardiotoxicity, so the my group focused the second uh, generation of drugs. So we here you can see the structurally similar uh, to the DP4 format, only changing uh, methyl to ethyl. Surprisingly, after changing this functional group, this compound um, does not show any cardiotoxicity. Also, the activity is similar. You can see here 0 0.04 micromolar. Also, this compound uh, significantly reduced the tumor volume. Uh, you can see here, this is the control and this is the DP4E4 MT treated uh, mice. Significantly reduced the tumor size also you can see here this is a heart so this is db4 44 mt new analogs and this is uh, sorry this is the vehicle control and this is the dp4 format t and this is a uh, dp4 4 mt second generation analogs you can see here the dp4 4 mt induce some cardio toxicity you know there's damage of heart but you can see here the new analog doesn't show any toxicity this is also another key letters. Again, the tumor volume of the this agent uh, significantly reduced it the uh, higher concentration, like zero, uh, six milligram. 
you can see here it's close to the dp44 mating so this compound again so the this compound uh, in the i resistant cancer cells shows close to dp44 mating so again so these compounds are still uh, processing to for the clinical trials also the another uh, important drug uh, name called dpc this is also second generation drugs again this drug also easy to synthesize uh, using uh, diprotyl ketone 4 xl 4 methyl 3 thiosemic carboxyl condensed uh, easily condensed with these two uh, starting material and form the dpc again this compound also shows uh, that does not show any cardiotoxicity so this uh, here you can see the first uh, analog first generation analog contain dimethyl and second uh, generation one is uh, ethyl and this one is replaced methyl ethyl into cyclohexyl after only this functional group play important role that's why it's, um, it this compound showed uh, potent activity and safety in in vivo and also the impo show good pharmacokinetics uh, te technique and did not generate toxic metabolites uh, based on this uh, success of this compound enter into the phase one clinical trials in 2016 for uh, re for advanced and resistant cancers here also you can see here the this compound dpc so the, this is the vehicle control and this is the standard drug gemcitabine and this is a dp 44 mati and dpc you can see here compared to dp 44 mati dpc completely reduced the tumor size you can see here this so this is the dp 44 mati and this is the gemcitabine so gemcitabine is the standard drug now uh, using for pancreatic uh, cancer treatment and the gemcitabine and dp 44 mati it's close activity but dpc you can see here dpc it's completely uh, reduced the tumor con compared to control you can see here tumor weight dpc is significantly reduced even compared to dp 44 mati also it's more significant and animal weight also it's uh, if the compound uh, significantly reduce the weight but did, did not affect any uh, part of the animal bodies so the in in the terms the dpc and dp44 mt it's not affect any other part of the bodies here similarly the another cell type like uh, dpc after 21 days significantly reduced the tumor size of the mice so you can see here this control and dpc treated uh, animals it's significant uh, to the control so based on this success story the dpc uh, still it's in the phase one clinical trials and but uh, we have received some drawbacks of these compounds also because it induced some um, during the patients taking the patients uh, by orally so it induced some um, myoglobin oxidation so resulting from resulting in muscle damage so the yeah so so both uh, dp 44 mati and dpc also the dp 44 mt other uh, chelators uh, also shows uh, important strategy so frontier strategy to exploit pgp mediated resistance so these uh, compounds uh, once they enter into the lysosomes and bind with the uh, I, uh, copper or iron inside the lysosomes in the acetic medium to undergo the uh, again the uh, undergoing the redox cycling and uh, produce the ROS in the acetic medium and followed by apoptosis. So these compounds are good, but at the same time, so the lead compound DPC and DP44 MT. So yeah here yeah. so induce uh, side effects dp44 mt uh, induce some uh, cardiotoxicity and dpc uh, caused myoglobin oxidation resulting in muscle damage so the iron uptake and iron up eplex is the important to whether these uh, chelators uh, uh, depletion ions from cells or release iron from the other uh, part of the bodies you can see here the first generation analog and second generation analog shows a good iron releasing. You can see this compared to control, the dp 44 mt going uh, 45% and TPC going 25 to 30%. But um, 
depletion so i am uptake uh, look the control is 100 percent the dp4 4 mt is significantly really uh, uptake the cells uh, ions from the cells uh, so again dpc also uptake uh, ions from the cells so which is good so so again so these uh, two lead compound are showing some drawbacks like uh, it's not uh, going well forward so that's why still we are making new ideas to send changing the monitors or substituent you see it's a good uh, selectivity it's going uh, it's uh, showing good anti-cancer activity it's also showing uh, less toxicity in normal cells uh, but it's only induced the uh, muscle damage so that's why now we are preparing uh, third generation drugs to changing uh, I'm working on the third generation drugs and I'm completely changing this group. I'm taking the DP4 formative because of this mighty showing good anti-cancer activity and also it shows a lot of properties inside the metabolism. And I'm changing this uh, whole group. So, and so this is the third generation uh, results. So we are preparing the patterns and uh, it's confidential. That's why I'm not showing the structures. So here, so the metal uh, donating groups, I'm keeping the same, but I'm changing this part. After changing this part, you can see here, so DPC, so it shows only, uh, after 24 hours, only it shows the activity. But the new compound, PPPT series, within a three hours, it showed 22.21. Which means after seven to two hours, it reaches close to DPC in the uh, neuroblastoma cells, also the pancreatic cells. You can see here, in, this is the eye resistant cells, and after 24 hours, only it shows the ICPT close to DPC. After seven to two hours, it's close to DPC. Also, the iron uptake, iron uh, heplex studies, uh, the iron released uh, DPC and uh, PPC close activity, and also the uptake. You can see here, so they're based on the cytotoxicity studies. Uh, we are also synthesized uh, uh, ligand alone and uh, bind with some metals like copper, iron, zinc. You can see here, this is the after three hours. Yeah, you can, this is the clear visualization. After three hours, so this is the standard drug. 24 hours also, there is no effect for the standard drugs. And DP44 MT slightly affect, not too much. And uh, DPC after 24 hours, uh, some of the cells are dead. You can see here the new series, after three hours, after three hours, most of the cells are dead. After 24 hours, there is no cells, which is good. Uh, you know, in ca cancer uh, research, uh, most of the compounds are more uh, toxic, uh, kill more cancer cells. At the same time, it kill also normal cells. So I also checked in normal cells in, uh, um, in human fibroblast cells, MRC5. It shows uh, good selectivity. So it's not kill too much for the normal cells, but in terms of, in, in case of the ca cancer cells, it completely kill the cancer cells, which is good. That's why we are uh, prepare, preparing for the next process. You can see here, after, after binding with the metals, uh, this ligand, after binding with the copper and uh, iron and uh, zinc, you can see this is the orange one is the copper chloride mon monomer and the violet one is the copper dimer, uh, two ratio ligands. And this is the iron complex. Surprisingly, we found the ex we find the surprising result for zinc one. You can see here zinc or pink, uh, the violet, uh, pink color. It doesn't affect anything after three hours, 20, uh, even six hours, 24 hours. But after 72 hours, it's, it shows the similar activity to the copper. We find the mechanism of these compounds. I'm not showing the data here. Uh, the, it enter into the lysosome, it, it undergo the transmetallation. The zinc become uh, copper, and then it form the redox, active, redox cycling, and then uh, followed by ROS production, production and cell death mechanism. So this is also interesting results for zinc complexes. We are uh, planning to studying for this zinc because it's not more potent at the, you know, the, in, in cancer research, it's good. Some of the cancers is more aggressive. We need to kill uh, short-term incubation, but also so 
in other case it's not good if the compound immediately kill means it's more uh, toxicity so in in that case the zinc complex uh, it's a tricky one it's not showed any activity even after 22 hours also but after 72 hours it shows the similar to copper and uh, ligand alone so that's what uh, so again so the the dpc only uh, induce the muscle damage that's why the new uh, ligands we are tested in the myoglobin hemoglobin oxidation you can see here so the new ligand it's not much difference compared to dpc even in the hemoglobin also but once it's bind with copper completely block the myoglobin and hemoglobin oxidation i'm not showing the data because i'm still doing for that experiments so we find the new methodology and we find the new exciting results of the complex it's completely block the myoglobin oxidation because the oxymyoglobin uh, once uh, enter to the drugs, uh, the oxymyoglobin or oxyhemoglobin bind with drugs and uh, met met myoglobin or met hemoglobin. Oxymyoglobin is the active form of active form, which is good in the body. But once these drugs uh, DPC enter into the body, and the oxyhemoglobin, oxymyoglobin uh, going back to met which is not good. So that's why the patients got uh, muscle pain. So this compound, uh, the PP compound, is not uh, much different for DPC, but it bind with uh, metal and it significantly block the um, myoglobin and uh, hemoglobin oxidation, which is also good. So that's why we are uh, planning to move on to the next process. So now these compounds, the ligand and also the complexes undergoing for all, uh, animal studies, uh, we are collaborating, collaborator doing for that. And then once it, uh, the results will uh, show us uh, for the next process to moving to the clinical trials. So, yeah. Uh, this is my research, ongoing research, and recently I got uh, three grants from uh, Griffith Institute for Drug Discovery and Griffith University, also the NHMRC National uh, Health and Medical Research Council. I greatly acknowledge to the funding agency. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us with your informative session. We are honored to hear your informative words. Dear friends, you can make the session more vibrant with your questions. Good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Sir, your uh, presentation was very basic and uh, I could see the importance of chemistry in uh, drug discovery. Uh, yes. Very well uh, traveled path, sir, and uh, congratulations on your success. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, yeah, sir. And uh, uh, our set of students are basically from uh, first year BSc Biochemistry, second year, third year, up till second year MSc. Okay. So I can see that you have done a wide uh, range of uh, uh, clinical parameters and uh, chemical parameters in your studies related yes. to cancer. Yes. Uh, so can you please highlight on the techniques that you use for uh, estimating the drug? Because concentration of a drug is very important in cancer mm -hmm. studies for determining the cytotoxicity and other yes. things. So yes. can you just highlight on two techniques, uh, not more than that, uh, which will be useful for the students. You mean the, so based on the MTT studies, uh, we are first yes. checking the eye concentration, madam. So you are yes. asking about the concentration of the drugs uh, into the cancer No, no, no. Cell. Not the concentration of the drug because that is uh, related to your data work and all that. I just yes. wanted to know what analytical techniques you use in, in your drug discovery. Something like spectroscopy, calorimetry. Oh, uh, yes. For the MTT, I say, oh, okay, ma'am. So for the first preliminary uh, studies, we are testing the new agents uh, in vitro using cells and then uh, used for ELISA reader and plate reader using uh, UV visible absorption at 560 nanometers. And then we are also checking the cell morphology of the compounds using a fluorescent spectra whether the morphology is like apoptosis compared to control, whether it becomes cells uh, shrinking, uh, chromatin condensation, what, uh, what will happen after treated with compounds. So in this technique, we used uh, fluorescent spectra. Also, we are uh, uh, used Western blood analysis 
to check the mechanistic pathway of these uh, type of ligands. And also we used the uh, confocal images, uh, whether these compounds enter into the nuclei or not, uh, what is the, uh, whether it uh, localized with mitochondria or lysosome. So in this test, uh, we used for confocal and immunofluorescence. Uh, yeah, so also we used for some DNA binding also, whether uh, based on the success story of cisplatin, because cisplatin is the, uh, metal based drug it target dna so some of the metal complexes we also tested uh, dna binding whether the compounds uh, bind with dna or not uh, using uh, for that studies we used uv usable spectroscopy fluorescence spectra cd spectra and epr even mass spectra also excellent so yeah. analytical yeah. techniques they play a very important role in uh, exactly. drug based studies Yes. Excellent, sir. Excellent. And uh, next question is very simple, very basic, something related to the current pandemic situation, sir. And sure. we come across that uh, anti-cancer drugs are used in the treatment of COVID. So have you tried with any trial studies uh, related to your drug with uh, COVID uh, culture or something? Uh, yeah, it's a nice question. <laughs> Actually, <clears throat> So the these uh, agents for our group like DP4, D or DPC, even the third generation drugs also. So these drugs mainly target the proteins. So proteins also some of the RNA, but the COVID is uh, basically RNA. So we never tested uh, due to the unavailability of lab. Uh, but some of the zinc complexes, not our group, some other groups also my combined with uh, my, I worked with other people. Uh, they are tested uh, some zinc complexes. Uh, yeah, it shows some activity, but it's also zinc. Uh, it's good for health. Still, the we are. It's a basic studies, but we never tested these compounds against COVID, man, due to the unavailability of uh, labs because we need P PC lab, PC four, PC five labs. So we have only PC two and PC three labs. Okay, so it's to do that excellent excellent presentation sir thank you so much and i guess our students will take home the message that uh, spectroscopy is a very important part in drug discovery yeah, sure, and you sure. have uh, spoken about uh, fluorescence and uh, uv visible spectroscopy so hopefully students will concentrate more on that part when they're going to read it in their uh, theory uh, theory and also yeah, thank yeah. you so much for talking about the importance of ELISA and the DNA binding plotting studies and so yes, on. Yes, so even thank the myoglobin so oxidation also I used for the UV visible spectra, it is easy. So you can take the control uh, myoglobin or hemoglobin and then you can treat your compounds. It's easy uh, running UV visible and then you can check the difference whether the after treatment with compound shifted to UV visible region or DD region. So okay. it's actually UV visible spectra play an important role in the drug development. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, so much. And uh, thank you for the, the wonderful session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. I have a couple of questions to ask. Yes, please, ma'am. Yes. Uh, the first question is, uh, thiosemicarbazones are usually said to have a lot of toxic effects. So yes. if that is true, then how can we regard thiosemicarbazones as potent can anti-cancer agents yeah because uh, yeah you're right even the, that's why i showed the third generation drugs within a three hours it kills all the cancer cells which means it's a more toxic um, many other uh, uh, similar uh, structure might also show uh, more toxicity but this third generation drug, in the case of normal cells does not kill all the normal cells that's why the selectivity is good Say, for example, so, okay, thiosemic arbison might be toxic, but but the attaching to the other functional groups, uh, that's why we are changing the position of the group and then functional group, protein, you know. The so these groups reduce the toxicity. Say, for example, so the thiosemic arbitrate alone show good activity, but when it bind, it combined with uh, dipyridyl ketone or bipyridyl ketone, the activity, the activity of the compound loses because of the attached compound. So every compound having the toxicity, but after the depends upon the functional group present in the thiosemic arbison. Say, for example, one of the isatin compound. So, usually, isatin is naturally available compound. If you are bind with thiosemic arbison, the toxic of the thiosemic arbison loses after binding with uh, isatin. 
Yes. Uh, the next question would be: I could say I could see that uh, you were talking about various compounds. Yes. Uh, so, how does uh, the target specificity of the compound uh, is ensured for the treatment? Uh, yes. So that's why I showed. Uh, so these key letters, for, especially for my group uh, compounds, DP, DPC, and the new compounds. So it followed different mechanistic pathways. Uh, one of the important uh, mechanisms is NDRG1. So it's a bad guy. So these compounds upregulated upregulate the NDRG1. Also, the another mechanism called the PGP. So this compound enter into the lysosome as in the acidic medium pH around five. So it absorbs the ions uh, copper from the cells and undergoing uh, attack cycling, and uh, followed by produce the ROS and then followed by cell death. This is the mechanistic pathway of these compounds. Yeah, that's why I showed the double punch mechanism. You know, so the compound first uh, depletion of ions from the cells because cancer cells wants ions and cells for growing. So these compounds removing the cells uh, excess ion and copper from the cells and again bind with these uh, metals and then followed by you know undergoing uh, reduction cycling use ROS and kill the cancer cells. Okay, and uh, how are these compounds metabolized in the body and excreted? Yes, uh, so every structures like DP4, fumetti, also DPC, even the uh, new compound also contain the lipophilic group. So lipo, you know, the compound is the, every time we are before going to prepare this compound, we are checking whether this compound uh, obey the lipid lipid rule or not, because of the you know the nitrogen counts and everything. So this compound already having the lipophilic nature, lipophilic substituents. So it's easy to penetrate into the cell wall membrane, and it enter interact with protein and bind with protein, and after that it enter into the lysosomes sir uh, good afternoon sir yes this is dr sriram prasad i have a small doubt is there any yes. possibility of combining um, zinc with thiocarbosone uh, thio so that the toxicity of thiocarbosone may may be reduced am i right yes exactly correct sir that's why i explained my third generation drug after hmm. 24 hours also the new compound doesn't show any activity okay Especially zinc one. Okay, okay, okay. You are right, sir. You are right. So because zinc is a better anti-diabetic agent, likewise zinc may also act as anti-cancer agent if it is combined with any organic ligand or something. Yes, you are right, sir. But the problem is we need uh, you know ROS inside the cells. But zinc is uh, is it it not produce ROS because zinc outermost orbital is completely filled. You know. Okay. So it's not possible to uh, even if you are taking C if C V you don't get any reduction potentially. Okay. Because the outermost orbital completely filled. That's why my case. Because zinc is an antioxidant compound. It protects uh, oxidative stress. Because yes, oxygen is a condition wherein uh, there is imbalance of oxidants and antioxidants in the system. So yes. zinc may protect. What I'm asking that is there possibility of combining zinc with semicarbosone so that the efficacy of semicarbosone may be increased. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. That's, okay, why, I'm, okay. that's why I'm coming to uh, say that the okay. zinc won't bind the ligands bind with zinc. The activity toxicity will reduced. Okay, okay, okay. But after 72 hours, it showed close to the ligand or other copper or other metals, because oh. these zincs once it, uh, once it enter into the lysosome, it's undergone the transmetallation. Zinc become copper. Okay. We got that. Uh, yeah, we proved that. Okay, sir. Your presentation was very good, sir. Excellent, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Yes, thank, thank you so you. much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I can find a few questions in the chat box. May I proceed with it? Yep, please, ma'am. So, uh, sir, uh, the compounds that you talked about, uh, are they present in any plant sources? Are they naturally present? All the compounds uh, are uh, chemically synthesized, not naturally available. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it was really nice presentation. Thank you so much for your lucid answer. Thank yes. you, thank you. When you practice gratefulness, there is a sense of respect towards others. I now invite Ms. Nitya Shri from 3rd BSc Biochemistry to deliver a vote of thanks. Thank you, Reshma. Good morning, everyone. We have reached the end of this meet. I am Dinitya Shri from 3rd BSc Biochemistry. I take the opportunity to put my gratitude into words. Gratitude is one of the least articulate of the emotion 
especially when it is deep. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. Let me start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's occasion a resounding success. First and foremost, on behalf of our DG Vaishnav College, I would like to thank our respected secretary, Sri Ashok Kumar Mundraji, and our respected principal, Captain Dr. S. Santosh Babu, sir, and also our respected head of the department, Dr. P.T. Srinivasan, sir, who took initiative to give this wonderful session among us. And I also thank you, sir, for assisting and encouraging all of us in every aspects. On behalf of everyone, I would like to thank Dr. Mahindran Brahmasevan, sir, for this enlightening session. The slides were so informative and very useful, sir. Heartfelt congratulations to the organizing committee and the volunteers for your hard work. Last but not least, I thank all the fellow participants for their cordial presence throughout the meet. Thank you. Have a good day.